In this video, I'm going to go over how to do a three-way reconciliation for a trust or escrow account. This would be done by a company who holds money from their customers for whatever reason in this type of bank account. This could be an attorney who collects retainers from clients or holds money in a trust account for some type of transaction, such as a property purchase. Or it could be a property management company that has some sort of requirement for certain funds to be held in this type of bank account. I'm going to try to keep this demonstration as simple as possible with the hopes that if you can learn the basic template of the reconciliation, you can apply it to a more elaborate and complicated situation. I'm going to demonstrate this reconciliation as if this is for an attorney who holds client retainers. They would collect the retainer from the client before legal services are provided. And then once legal services are provided, they would transfer that money to their operating account accordingly. I'm going to assume that you have a basic understanding of a trust bank account and the transactions related to it. If you need me to make a separate video explaining all the pieces of it and how to post things to different accounts, please let me know in the comments and I will try to accommodate that. And also keep in mind that a property management company or an attorney would probably have a much more sophisticated system than this. A lot of these companies use a separate software in addition to QuickBooks or instead of QuickBooks. But for demonstration purposes, I decided to put this in QuickBooks so that I could show you the basics. So I set up this scenario where I have the operating bank account for their operating revenues, expenses, and other business operations. They have their trust bank account. And then I set up an account. This is an other current liabilities account. And this is where I'm going to track client retainers. And I created sub accounts for each individual client. So if I were to go into the main account, I could see all of the transactions. But if I were to go into individual accounts, I could see individual client transactions. So now let's get into the actual reconciliation. When you do a regular reconciliation in your accounting software, you are comparing your bank or credit card statement with what you have in your accounting records. So this is the first thing I would do in a three-way reconciliation. I would do my regular bank reconciliation. And then a three-way reconciliation is gonna have a third element. It's gonna compare what's on the bank statement, what's in the accounting software, and then we're also gonna look at the total of all of the individual retainer balances. So the total of all the client retainers should match up to our accounting records. So let's go ahead and do the regular reconciliation. I would click on the reconcile tab and I would put my information in as normal. In this example, I'm using an assumption that the bank statement had an ending balance of 30,500 at the end of December. And I'm just gonna start reconciling. And what I would do just like normal is mark anything that cleared the bank statement. Now, if you're using QuickBooks and you have your account linked, this will be a lot easier because things will be checked off already. I know some of these are in November, but let's just go with it. Basically, I would just be marking off things that were on the bank statements. And in this example, just for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna assume that this check did not clear in December and this deposit that was done at the very end of December also didn't clear. Both of these posted on the bank statement in January, but everything else cleared the bank. So I would just finish now, just like any other reconciliation, the difference is zero. Everything looks good. And that part is done. Now I'm going to go ahead and look at the history by account so that I can pull up the report 
of that reconciliation. And I'm going to look at that real quick. So the statement ending balance, like I said a few minutes ago, was 30500 And there were a few uncleared transactions, but the balance that I'm looking for is the 32000 That is the adjusted balance if everything had cleared the bank. So this is the balance that I'm going to use in my three-way reconciliation. So what I want to do now is look at my individual client retainer balances and see if they add up to $32,000. So let's go ahead and run a balance sheet for an ending date of 12-31-2023. Okay, so here's the trust account. It's $32,000. And if I go down here to the client retainers, these sub accounts do add up to 32,000. At this point, I would consider this reconciled. Everything looks good as is. However, I would probably go a step further and write up a report. In my report, I would put individual balances to have a record of it. And I would put any other findings of mistakes or anything like that in the report. And I will show you that report later in the video. But first, I want to talk a little bit about what to do if it does not match, if, this, if these client retainers don't add up to the correct number. So there are four places I would look. The first place I would look is in the actual trust account. I would set this balance sheet for a time period since my last reconciliation. So for example, if the last reconciliation I did was on October 31st, I'm gonna go ahead and look for any transactions after that through the date of this reconciliation. So I do November 1st through 1231. And then I would drill down on the trust account and see if there were any operating transactions in this account that shouldn't be. So I might have to drill down on some transactions and keep in mind that you can change your columns, add columns, take out columns, whatever you need to do to make this easier. And you could even export it to Excel if it's a big report and that might help you because you can use the search feature in Excel. And then another thing I like to do, which does take longer, so this is typically the last thing I do, if at all possible. Hopefully I've found any mistakes before this, but I would drill down to the operating account in the same way and make sure there's no trust transactions in the operating account. And then another thing I like to do is look at mathematical differences. So for example, if these added up to 32,200 and it was supposed to be 32,000, that's a $200 difference. So I would skim through transactions over the last couple months and look for anything for $200. And then I would also look at individual retainers. So I would go back to my chart of accounts and just skim through some of these accounts and just see if I could find any mistakes here. So those are my four main places to look if I have an error. And then hopefully at this point, I've found any mistakes and corrected any mistakes that I could correct. And then of course, I would write up my report for any mistakes that I couldn't fix, such as mistakes related to bank accounts, which I'll explain in a second. When I do a three-way reconciliation, I like to write up a report. This part isn't completely necessary. It's more of a reference point for me I save this in my records and I would also give it to the attorney for their records and their review. Basically what I would do here is just put in all of the client names, their balance in their retainer as of December 31st, 2023. I would show that those balances do add up to the 32,000 that I referenced earlier in the video. And then I would also add in here unclear deposits and outstanding checks to get the reconciled balance. Basically, this is just to match it up to the bank statement balance. 
to make sure everything balances. And this is just an old template that I created many years ago and I've used this same template many, many times. And it's just something that's worked for me and has helped me. And this also helps me during the reconciliation because I'll put data in here and then as I work on it, I will update this as I find mistakes. And then what I also will do if there are any mistakes that need to be fixed by the attorney, I would write up the details of that down at the bottom of this report. Now, if it's a mistake in the software that I can fix, I will go ahead and fix it. But sometimes there are mistakes related to the bank accounts that the attorney has to correct. For example, if money was accidentally deposited into the wrong bank account, then that would be something they would need to fix by transferring money to bank accounts, between bank accounts. This isn't entirely necessary, it's just more of a tool for myself to help me with the reconciliation, and it's a way for me to give the data to the attorney in a summary format so that they can review it as well. And then before I end the video, I wanna point out that some states, some locations have their own forms that have to be filled out so you would need to check with your state or your location and see if you had any additional reconciliation forms you had to fill out. Most attorneys already know about these forms, but if you work for an attorney or if you're new to working for attorneys, that, that would definitely be something to ask about. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below and thank you for watching.